I'm sure there isn't a single person listening who won't relate to this devotion in some way, especially during this crisis that our world is experiencing, the pandemic and all the quarantines that we've all been facing. Along with most of you, the Blythe family also became ill. And one particular night, it seemed the hours drug by for me. I looked at the clock multiple times, thinking, when will this night ever be over? When will I see daybreak? You see, there's something about nighttime that can seem like eternity when you're sick. Everyone else is asleep and you're trying not to make noise and awake the other family members, so you just lay there and wish for the day. In the 27th chapter of Acts, we read of a great storm that Paul encountered known as Eurachlodon. This storm was a record breaker. Verse 20 says, And when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, and no small tempest lay on us, all hope that we should be saved was then taken away. Verse 27 mentions 14 nights of this storm. To think of two weeks in a ship out on a turbulent sea is mind-blowing. Verse 29 says, Then fearing lest we should have fallen upon rocks, they cast four anchors out of the stern and wished for the day. That word wished is the same as we know it to mean, as in earnestly desiring something to happen. But it also carries a deeper meaning that meant these men started praying earnestly. I can imagine this crew of 276 passengers saying, God, please, will you have mercy on us and let us see the sun again? Please, Lord, we are ready for a new dawning and an ending to this storm. Well, God spoke to Paul in verse 31 and said, Unless you and these passengers abide in the ship, you will all perish. Friend, during the long night that I'm referring to that I encountered, I began to seek God and I felt Him deal with me to bring you a devotion concerning a Eurachlodon storm that you are facing right now. Maybe you're where you are for reasons such as Paul was, who had done nothing wrong yet ended up in this storm of his life. He had warned them not to sail, and yet they didn't heed. Paul didn't live in a pity party for where he was at. Instead, verse 21 says, But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, you should have hearkened unto me and not have loosed from Crete and to have gained this harm and loss. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. But there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar. And lo, God hath given them all that sail with thee. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. How be it? we must be cast upon a certain island. What peace must have settled over that ship in the darkness of the night as Paul encouraged them as he did? He knew God promised to break and it was about to happen. Friend, I want to encourage you. Let these words of Paul bring encouragement to your soul today. God has not forgotten about you. God has not forgotten no matter how long your storm has lasted. God hasn't left you in this storm, and it's okay to wish for the day. And I feel God wants you to know that it's very much in order to pray earnestly for your relief. God knows how much you can handle. He knows what you can bear and also knows where he's going to take you when this night is over. Thankfully, the crew listened to Paul this time and stayed in the ship, though it broke apart. They each grabbed a piece of the ship and escaped safely to the certain island that God designated them to reach. Can you imagine how this island of people must have felt to see this massive group of sailors swimming or with broken pieces of ship? But undoubtedly, God was present in what happened on the island of Melita. 
The people of the island were never the same after Paul and these 275 men arrived. Great victories were won. These folks who knew nothing about God were able to see Him in action. You remember the venomous viper that attacked Paul as he was building a fire was shook off in the fire and Paul suffered no harm. Many healings took place, with one being the chief's own father. The island of Miletus was never the same, and may I say, neither were the 276 crewmen. They were honored with great honors, along with everything that was needed to continue their voyage. Weary warrior, let me remind you in your long night, it won't always be like this. Weeping may endure for your night, but joy is coming in the morning. Keep praying. Keep holding on. It's only natural and reasonable for you to wish for the day. But take courage. You will see a new day dawning, and glorious victories are ahead for you. <music>